I had a kind of hard time deciding if today's episode was going to be Pokemon as Dungeons and Dragons monsters or Pokemon as Dungeons and Dragons characters. Because on the one hand, I thought if I did Dungeons and Dragons monsters, that would make it a little bit too similar art-wise to the Pokemon as SCPs series. But also, it's always fun drawing monstrous versions of Pokemon. But it's also been a long time since I did a D&D character episode instead of a D&D monster episode. So in the end, I just decided, why not do a bit of both? You can all let me know what you prefer in the comments. Let's get into it, shall we? Let's go. Hit like, if you want. Subscribe, if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show. Across the world, many places face great struggles and conflict. Some fight invasion at the hands of the tyrannical Shimada Empire. Others face smaller threats, such as a treacherous necromancer trying to take their home from them. But in other places, the challenges faced are self-imposed. Ways to push themselves to improve and grow and earn their places in their communities. One of these such places is the Pallet Grove Hills. This region has seen a long period of relative peace, despite being home to three distinctly different clans of beings who have not always gotten along. There are the Grung, a frog-like species of druidic people who live in the swamplands, the turtle folk, who live along the rivers that surround the dormant volcanic mountains, where live the final clan, the Dragonborn. These three clans have warred with each other in the past, but not in many decades, as they found peace through a shared appreciation for competition. Their young are all set to similar trials at an early age, and they often have tournaments to see which clan is producing the finest warriors and tacticians. The Dragonborn are the proudest of the three, and for all their young, proving themselves to the clan is an essential part of growing up. By the age of 16, as they finally sprout their first horn on the backs of their heads, they are sent off into the wilds to develop and prove their might. They must return with proof that they have defeated eight beasts, each of a different element or set of abilities. When young Maelian of family Charon was finally of age to set off, he did so with an added challenge. The most prized possession of his family was an ever-burning flame from the very dragon that had began their ancestral line. The flame could be put out, but had been kept lit for centuries, and Maelian, like his mother and grandfather before him had, was made to carry this flame with him on his journey, and to ensure it remained lit while undertaking his quest. The task would have daunted most, but not Maelian. He already believed himself to be the greatest warrior that had ever lived, and was determined to prove it. The day he finally set off, he did so at the same time as two of his friends from the other clans, and while they were all close and wished each other all the best, Maelian boasted proudly before they departed that he'd far surpass the might of his friends and return in half the time it would take them. The young Grung and Turtle folk were both used to Maelian's arrogance and aggressive nature, so they simply laughed along with his words and wished him well as they all set off. Maelian went on alone, first running into the Trevenarian woods. It was a region that got particularly dark and menacing at night. In fact, rumors had been told that recently a pack of cursed demon wolves had made the woods their home. It was said that if you were burned by the flames that spewed from their maws, the pain induced would never go away, even if you were a dragonborn with fire-resistant skin. Being injured by flames was considered a great embarrassment for a dragonborn, but Maelian's boldness sent him immediately searching for these creatures, knowing that even if he didn't find one, there were many other beasts that wandered those woods, and it certainly wouldn't be long before he found his first foe. On his first night in the woods, he refused to sleep, claiming to himself that he could only do so after defeating his first opponent. By midnight, he was still wide awake and on the hunt. He'd passed by a few various creatures, but none powerful enough to count for his task. He was growing agitated when he suddenly heard faint footsteps. The second he focused on them, they vanished, but all the same, he bared his dragon claw gauntlets and yelled out, Whoever you are and whatever you are, show yourself and face the might of Maelian of the House of Eow! An arrow suddenly grazed across his tail and almost made him drop his family flame. He whipped around just as a tall, feathered figure ran up to him and clamped his mouth shut. Quiet, you yammering lizard, and douse that flame now! Maelian quickly recognized her as an owlin archer. He'd heard of her kind, but never actually seen one before. 
He would have been more intrigued by her if his honor hadn't just been put in question. He tore his mouth free and yelled, How dare you suggest that I put out the flame of my great ancestor, and I won't be silenced by some feathery tart with pointy sticks. Her beak quivered with anger for a brief second before her gaze shot past him and her expression changed to a smirk. She took a few steps back. Whatever you say, lizard boy. I am not a measly lizard. I am Elian, the greatest dragonborn to ever be- ah! Something suddenly wrapped around his leg and ripped him off the ground. Dangling by his foot, he was raised into the air, faced with a tree bearing a single glowing red eye. Lizard boy, meet the Trevenarian Ent, the guardian of these woods. It's really not a fan of fire in its home. Maelian slashed a claw forth trying to cut through the eye of this giant tree, but he was pulled back and missed. He glanced back to ensure his family flame was still lit, then curled himself up and slashed the branch around his ankle. He fell, landed on one of the creature's roots, then leapt back from it. But before he could reach the ground, a nearby tree suddenly smacked one of its branches against his head, slamming him to the earth. He pretended to not be dazed from the hit and leapt up. How many of these stupid weeds are there? Another tree's roots suddenly curled up from the ground and whipped at him, but he just managed to duck under it. The Owlin Archer was perched against a tree in the distance, watching. Oh, there's only one, but the Great Ent can control all the trees around it too, and it's not likely to stop having them beat you up until you put out that flame. Another root shot up from the earth and smacked Maelian across the face. Never! This flame has burned for centuries and it will burn for centuries more! That dumb twig will just have to be the first beast that I slay! It'll be a fitting warm-up for the demon hounds! The Alan's eyes opened wide at that mention. Maelian reeled back his head, taking a deep breath, then spat a beam of flames right at the base of the creature. It shrieked with rage and thrashed its roots all across the ground, kicking dirt over the flames and putting them out instantly. Another cascade of branches shot down to the young dragonborn, but he swirled around in a circle, flaring out his claws and slicing all the branches to pieces. He ran for his foe, but more vines shot up from the earth beneath him, leaving him no time to respond. Maelian's arms were wrapped to his side, and vines tangled around his mouth, sealing it shut. He thrashed violently as he was raised before the Ent again. It angrily reached its arm towards the lantern that he held in his tail. He thrashed harder and harder, but couldn't get free. Suddenly, a barrage of arrows fired through the woods and cut all the branches holding him. As Maelian fell, he saw a shadow suddenly dart across the ground beneath him. The Ent noticed it too, and its gaze followed the blur as it bolted behind him. As Maelian landed, the Owlin ran up and grabbed the Dragonborn, tossing him over her shoulder and running from the scene. Unhand me! I had that thing right where I wanted it! I've seen that Ent kill troops of warriors in seconds, and as long as you're in these woods, and now that you've so moronically enraged it, it'll keep hunting you until it tears you to pieces. Let it try! I'll turn it to ashes! No you won't, but maybe you can assuage it. Sounds like you, me, and the Ent might all have a common enemy. Tell me more about these demon hounds that you're after. After some discussion, Maelian and the archer, who gave her name as Desity, realized that they were indeed after the same creatures. Her younger sister, Trix, had helped protect these woods, working alongside the Trevenarian Ent to keep the woods safe and harmonious. When a pack of hellhounds had made their home in the caverns of the woods, she tried to hunt them down as the Ent couldn't enter those caves. Sadly, Trix's body was found days later. She was barely recognizable from the burns. Desity had no interest in taking her sister's place as a guardian of the woods, but wanted nothing more than to slay the beasts that had taken her sister from her. Maelian was grudgingly convinced that trying to kill the Ent wasn't a good idea, and the honor-bound desire he saw in Desity to avenge her sister spoke to him, and he agreed to fight alongside her to hunt down the hounds. Luckily, she already knew where they were. It took a few hours before they reached a small cave, from inside which emitted a faint orange glow. Maelian stepped forward, ready to charge in, but Desity held him back. We'll need space to move, they'd have advantage inside the cave, so it's best to stay out here. 
So what, you wanna just wait around for them to wander out at some point? Oh, don't worry, they've certainly smelled us by now. They know we're here. She pulled back an arrow and aimed at the mouth of the cave. Maelian looked back just as one of the creatures was stepping out. It was nearly as tall as the cave, standing higher than a stallion, with a glowing maw and underbelly. It sniffed the air, then whipped its head right towards them. It howled, and two more of the beasts lurched out of the cave. Hope you're half as tough as you think you are, lizard boy. Desity loosed an arrow, and in a fraction of a second had another one knocked back. The first zipped for a hound's eye, but it just ducked in time for the arrow to clang off its horn. It spat a beam of flame that Desity dodged, and Maelian blocked by hurling his gauntlets in front of him. He spat his own flames back, but they just glazed over the beast and seemed to absorb right into its skin. The first hound ran at him, quaking the ground under its burning paws. It snapped its jaw forward, but Maelian ducked aside, then slashed his dragon claws right along its eye, cutting three huge gashes into its head. It stomped past him, snarling angrily before whipping its tail and slamming Maelian into a tree. The other two hounds were focused on Desity, who was leaping from tree to tree, firing arrows at them from a distance. As she shot through the air, one quickly leapt at a tree she was headed for and tackled it over. She missed the perch that she'd aimed for and landed clumsily on the ground as the other hound ran for her. It leapt maw wide, but she spun around, knocking back three arrows at once and loosing them all. Two pierced right into the creature's eyes, and the third fired right through to the back of its throat. She dodged aside as its body slammed to the ground, and the light quickly faded from its underbelly. Maelian had quickly recovered from his hit, and was slashing claws over and over and over at the hound before him. It was stumbling back, trying to avoid the hits. Its mouth opened, and it spat another shot of flames, but Maelian dodged aside and slashed right at the creature's horn. It cracked right off, and he caught it out of the air. The creature barked in rage and opened its mouth again, flames sputtering out just as it was about to spew its toxic flames. But then, Maelian swung the shattered horn right up through the hound's jaw, stabbing right into the creature's head. The beast dropped to the ground just as Desity was finishing off the third. It was stumbling, nearly dead with arrows pierced all over it, when Maelian ran over and drilled his claw right into its head, giving it the final blow. That way, he could claim he'd killed two of them. Desity rolled her eyes at him, but all the same, they'd done it, finally ridding these woods of the doomed hellhounds that had scourged them. Maelian took one horn as a trophy, then cut off another to grudgingly present to the Trevenarian Ent as penance for his earlier actions. It seemed to accept this, and he was allowed to continue passing through the woods. Desity agreed to lead him on to other creatures he could best. His boisterous attitude would even somewhat end up growing on her, more so after he became willing to take on some of her advice, as she was a fairly well-weathered warrior, with much wisdom to impart. And that began a tentative friendship that would see them onto many more adventures in the near future. Alright, so I think I might have slightly preferred doing the Pokemon as D&D characters part of this episode, but, you know, everything in this was still fun to draw. Even though, the D&D monsters did kind of end up looking like Pokemon as SCP's drawings, but with backgrounds added to them. Which, by the way, if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen my Pokemon as SCP series, got like six episodes of that, and, you know, the art is kind of similar to what I do here. Or maybe you want to check out my Plants vs. Zombies D&D episode, I think that was the last D&D thing I did. But who knows, maybe this will rejuvenate that world. You all want to see another episode of this? And if so, who do you want to see turned into a D&D character or creature? Let me know in the comments. And if you're liking this new trend I'm doing of drawing a couple characters in a piece, I think I'm really liking it. But I also like drawing the individual pieces, so just, you know, more, more stuff to put in the comments about what you want to see in future episodes. But besides that, that's all for today, except of course we're ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note. And the thought I want to leave people with today is a quote from Karen Salmanson, which is that no amount of regret can change the past, and no amount of anxiety can change the future. I hope that's helpful to someone out there. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next episode on Friday.